that are thought like again, take ye that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Notice the heavenly sphere again. For you and I on planet earth, be careful, the Lord is saying to his disciples, that you don't think down on one of these little ones. One of your brethren and sisters, I'm using in that context, and you could use the child for sure, but I suggest to you that's the context. Because up in heaven, in the heavenly sphere, there are angelic beings that see the face of my Father. There's something going on in heaven that you can't see, Peter, James, and John. This is what's going on in heaven. And beloved, from Hebrews chapter 1, it talks about angels who their occupation is to uh, preserve and help those who are heirs of salvation. Hebrews chapter 1, the last couple of verses of the chapter. So angels do work in that heavenly sphere. And here it says, they work in that heavenly sphere. They behold the face of my Father. Well, that translates, doesn't it, the importance of having that humble attitude and thinking I'm not better than brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so and so on. Think, that don't despise. Son of man, verse 11, has come to seek and save that which is lost. And in verse number 12, he says, think, how think ye? Notice it's a mind thing again. What's your opinion? How think ye? If a man have a hundred sheep and one go astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountains and seek if that which is gone astray? And if he so find it, verily, I say unto you, he rejoices more over that sheep uh, uh, than of the ninety-nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, notice the heavenly sphere, that one of these little ones should perish. Now, you certainly could use this in the gospel, but you could also use it towards those who are having a spiritual difficulty who are a brother or a sister in Christ. The bottom line, there is a care that is expected for all believers, to other believers, and to those that are lost. I find myself asking this question, what is the value of a soul? One soul. What is the value of one soul? I cannot put a value on it of any nature or of any kind. Because that individual will go out into eternity forever and ever and ever. It's an infinite value. God places on one soul, whether it's in the gospel. Uh, Brother Don and I were, he was giving us the grand tour of Earth Point and expressing some of these things that were on his heart concerning this community here. What is the value of one soul? It's limitless. It's limitless. And beloved, in the gospel, there is no limit to the value of one soul. It's worth it all. It's worth it all. What is the value of one believer who's had a, maybe a rough time in life? Maybe circumstances that people don't understand and kind of got just off to the side of the road a little bit, off to the side of the path. And maybe sometimes just can't get out of it. That happens in life, okay? Christian life has got some speed bumps. And sometimes you get in a position that you just can't seem to run through your mind the situations or the verses or I just can't get out of this little rut, okay? And it happens. It is so wonderful, so lovely that another brother or a sister can just draw alongside them. Put, <clears throat> put their arm around them and just say, let me help you a little bit. Just listen. Just listen. Give a verse. Have a little pray. Tell them you love them. value of a life of a Christian that's lost for God. What's the value of that? I try to think about that. Sure, they'll be in heaven, but maybe 20, 30, 50 years of just stalled it, as it reminds me saying, for God. What is the value of that? Oh, beloved, I suggest, that's the shepherd coming out here, the sheep, shepherd caring for the sheep, whether it's the lost or whether it's lost value for God in a life. So precious. I would encourage each one of us, the Lord Jesus, the great shepherd, the good shepherd, the chief shepherd, he sees value in those lambs 
And he says, in the heavenly sphere, it is not the will of my Father that one of these perish. That's the express will of God. Peter brings that out so clearly. So whether it's someone that's lost or someone that just needs some help, God says up in heaven, it is not his will that one of these should perish. Matthew <clears throat> chapter 20, as I said, is the sphere of the local assembly. And in context of our, our little topic, for these few moments we've been cons considering things that happen in heaven and things that happen in earth and trying by the grace of God to show the connectivity of these things. Sometimes, I have to admit, oftentimes in my experience, I miss the connectivity to heaven. But it's very, very real. It's not just here and now, what goes on in Burnt Point or St. John or Brunswick, where I come from. There's a connectivity to what's going on in the spiritual realm. I just need my eyes open to see it. In this context here, and I'm not going to read it, there's two brothers that didn't get along. I know that could never happen in Burnt Point. But once in a while, it happens on the mainland. So, they had a little problem. But if I wasn't tell us what the problem is, none of our business. But the scripture says, okay, got a little problem. I had problems with my brethren. And you know what my biggest problem is? Well, I can say it's me, but it's this little thing right here. Okay? It says stuff I shouldn't say. I said, I've said, I honestly, I'm being honest here, I've said something off the cuff, kind of half joking, but I hurt another brother, just me and him. But I made a, a conclusion based on not enough information, and I really wasn't serious about it, but I cut him. You know, he came to me a week later, and we had a little talk, you know. You said something, and, and you know, that's just not right. And I realized, oh my, my little off-the-cuff remark hurt him real bad. So I had to say, I am sorry. I was completely wrong. You ever say that? I mean, just you and me, you and me, you and me, you and Joe, or you and Bill, or Mary. I was completely wrong. And I'm so sorry I said that. you got to do that. Because there's a heavenly spirit we are operating in. And even if you didn't mean it, not good enough, say you're sorry. Find something you did say that was wrong. Admit it. Be, I'm going to say, be a man. Come down. Humble. That was sort of the context of this local assembly here. We're talking about Matthew 20. Come down. Come down. Voluntarily come down. Take a low place. I was wrong and I said this. And I, even though I didn't mean it, I was wrong to say it. And I apologize. End of the matter. Shake hands. Or give him a hug. Whatever. I was totally wrong. It takes a man to say that. But in consciousness of what's going on in the heavenly sphere, we must do that, my dear brother. The big heart does that, okay, in the fear of God. There's a connectivity with heaven, but suppose, no, I'm not going to do that. <coughs> just joking. He's too thin skinned and, and uh, tough. Well, he might come the next day and get a couple other brethren that uh, become a little more formal, okay? That's what's going on here. And they say, well, listen, boys, we've got to get straight up. And I say, I don't care who comes to me, I'm not, this is what I'm just, I don't care who tells me what, I'm not listening whatsoever. Now, in the context of the local assembly, some governmental things kick in. And I can find myself outside of fellowship with the local 